All right, so it's coming to shot. Wait, go back. <laughs> Are you ready? Are you ready to tell your story? into watching the video I just want to explain quickly about how it has been put together so I have been vlogging my journey for five years which is crazy um, it's been such a long time now so I have taken um, bits of Wilf's journey from the vlogs and put it together into one mega video of him there is some footage as well at the beginning of me doing an advanced medium which I actually have never put on the internet um, not because I was embarrassed by it but I just wasn't vlogging at the time and I didn't put it on. Uh, so that is new footage, which will be really exciting. And I'm just gonna walk you through our journey. There are so many ups and downs. It's definitely not one like continual um, upwards slant to Grand Prix. It's uh, it's all over the place, but I think that's just the beauty of it, isn't it? That's the reality of um, training horses. That's the reality of going up the levels as a competitor and it's just real life. And that's what I wanted to bring to you. Also, I just wanted to um, give you guys the basic facts about who Wilf is. I know a lot of you already know this, but if you're new to the channel or you don't know our story, then I will just quickly fill you in. So Wilfred is my incredible horse who I, I have trained from prelim to Grand Prix all on my own. He's the first horse that I've done this with. Um, I have owned him since he was a just backed five year old. He is now 14, so he was born in 2007. He is 16-3. He is Bay, which you will obviously see. Um, and what else about him? Oh yeah, he's by a stallion called Timeless. And I think that is everything. And yeah, that is about it. So let's get into his journey. There are a few pictures first with voiceovers just to explain his younger years because there's not much footage. Well, actually there's no footage of that. We just have pictures. Um, and then very shortly after that, we will get into the vlog stuff, into the video. So I really hope you enjoy this one, guys. And please do share whilst you are watching it. Um, it means so much to me. So let's start our story from the very beginning. We bought Wilf as a just backed five year old and here is a picture of him looking rather handsome. We started competing at Novice and didn't have much success. I actually couldn't keep him in the arena the first three tests I did. His modeling career, however, saw new heights when he was featured in the Kingsland catalog with Charlotte. Even though we had a rocky start to our competing, when we were at medium level, we actually went to the nationals twice and came third at the winter one. Here I am with one of my previous trainers, David, who helped me massively to go from not being able to stay in the arena to get to the nationals. So I really wanted to talk you guys through the um, flying changes stage with Wilf and the advanced medium stage, because this is definitely, this was the hardest phase for us. I don't know what happened there. I think I lost my outside rein. Anyway, this was the hardest phase for us. And I think this is where I cried the most tears in our journey. So as I've explained earlier in the video, Wilf uh, hit a point where he was really comfortable at medium level. He went to the nationals, came third, and I felt confident and he felt confident. But I remember when we first started teaching him changes, I didn't really have much of an idea of what I was doing. And I also think, to be totally honest, we started them too early um, when he wasn't in the right balance and I didn't have certain training things in place. Um, and I do think this is where he lost his confidence with them. Um, because of my mindset as well, I definitely lost my confidence with them. And at this stage of my riding, I really just didn't realise that changes, um, they take a long time for the horse to become confident in them it can be that you you get them you you teach that change but then it takes like a year and a half for that horse to be comfortable to do them in a test on your aid so at that point I just didn't understand this so I thought it was my fault I thought I was doing something wrong and I didn't understand it was the process 
Also, Wilf has always been a horse that is quite sensitive in the skin. So what I mean by that is when you touch him, um, he's sensitive to that. And now that I do the groundwork, uh, it's getting way better. But at this stage, I wasn't and I didn't understand that. So the minute I put my leg on or put the aid on, he would tighten in his whole body. And obviously, when it comes to flying changes, you need to be able to do that. Um, so I do think it was a mixture of like one, I don't think it was the easiest. And two, I didn't know what I was doing. And three, we started them when he just wasn't ready anyway believe it or not when you watch uh, i know we're not in the counter where yeah we're still in the trot but when you watch these flying changes in this test this is actually much improved um from what we were doing when i first started teaching them at home um he would just bolt blind uh the minute i actually even before i asked for the for the aid he was gone um and he would just get so nervous i remember literally feeling like i was getting whiplash and I would just spend every single session afterwards, like cry just crying, going, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. This is so hard. Um, and it was just a really tricky time. Also, I haven't seen these videos for a very long time. I actually, I had to like pull them off my parents' old computer um, for this video. And on reflection of watching how I, I, I'm riding him in this test, I'm actually really impressed with how I handle the changes you'll see in a minute because what he used to do is, is run off and now at least I can hold him or at this stage I could really hold him um, within that mistake basically and the sad thing is I do remember how I used to feel when I came out these tests I would just be so there we go I would just be so hard on myself I would be so mean to myself and all that did was make things harder made it harder for me to train him <laughs> good boy um and yeah, it just made the whole process a lot more difficult. So I really wish I could talk to my younger self and be like, you're doing such a good job. Um, just keep going. And I wish as well that I could see the videos of him doing ones now because I never thought it was going to be possible for him to find the relaxation in the changes. But I hope from watching this that you guys or the whole video that you really see that it is possible with a horse that finds something difficult or gets nervous in a certain movement that you can help them to find relaxation. You may be wondering as well how I started to improve the changes. For one, the first thing that I started to do was really improve the control of his shoulders. I found that when he was falling through um, an outside shoulder beforehand that he really couldn't come through with his hind leg and then he panicked. So I really thought about um, that. The other thing that helped at home as well, but actually we found it tricky when we got into a test, was doing um, half pass straight change or leg yield straight change because again, it didn't shock him when my leg had come on because I'd already moved him away from it and he was used to it. And to be honest, a lot of it was perseverance and I just kept going. Um, following on from watching this test, we're gonna watch another test which was in the same year, um, but you'll see that he has a little bit more confidence in a lot of them. Yes, some are a little bit dodgy, but I'm gonna let you enjoy mum and Emma's commentary. <laughs> Some short, doesn't it? Yeah, he is. He's just really unsure. Oh, that's actually a little bit of a little bit of a little Good boy. So he's not anticipating all his lines. Ah, good boy. Yes. Oh no, it didn't. No, no. Maybe done. So next up, we have my first ever vlog that I made, which was Wilfred's first PSG. Unfortunately, I didn't get the best footage in the test. So what will happen after you see the initial um, PSG test? There's little bits from that. 
We're then going to go into the Young Horse PSG class, which was at Hartbury Premier League. And this was actually his third ever PSG. And the commentary is absolutely brilliant. So I'll let you enjoy that. And as you will see, he was very, very spicy in this test. Um, nervous, but I was also quite nervous because it was a Premier League. So I think we fed off each other. Boy, everybody breathes. <laughs> Good boy. Oh, it's dead. Yeah, he's dead. Yeah. He's off. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, she saved it, but okay. <laughs> She's going the right way, we're fine. Good boy. That's alright. Nice change. Well, you hear a little bit of a Okay, my nerves really getting me really young. Bless him. I'm glad to sit tight, everybody. <laughs> Bless him, well, if he stared, dear. God. <laughs> <laughs> From the footage that I've shown you so far, when Wilfred got in the arena, he got extremely nervous. And I know that a lot of this was linked to me feeling insecure. And it's actually one of the main reasons that I started changing my mindset around and why I started social media in the first place, actually, um, is because I really knew my lack of self-belief had a massive impact on him. And that's, again, something that you'll see through the whole video. Um, now we're just going to show you a little clip of us doing some arena hires. This is something that we did a lot of because it gave both of us a chance to um, think about things a little bit more, take our time in a show environment without having to get in there, do a test and get back out. Hey guys, so today we are on our way to Allen's Hill to take Wilfred to um, we've just hired the arena really and to run through bits of the PSG and just to really to get him into like more of a show atmosphere. So the reason we have decided to hire an arena and not take him competing is so that I get longer in the arena and I don't have to leave if he is nervous. That's what I've been finding quite tricky. many dodgy shows that we had we did have some really good ones and some incredible moments and this really gave me um the knowledge that we were both capable of doing awesome things i also knew that even when he was doing well at these shows when he wasn't blowing up 
there was so much more in there. I knew that I could get um, his way of going so much better, like long term with more, uh, like me having more knowledge, me having more training, that that was gonna be possible. So I think I, I've always believed in him as a horse, like ever since um, I can remember, even when I wanted to sell him, that's not because I didn't think he was capable. It's because I didn't think I was capable of riding him. So I've always known that he's, got it in there. Um, I just had to find the right keys to uh, unlock certain doors and move him forwards. So we have just finished the PSG and it's sod's law that it rained so hard we couldn't film any of it because it is the first time that he's gone through the PSG without blowing up, making a mistake. Well, there were a tiny mistakes but not from the tension. So I am ridiculously happy because this has been two years in the making. You are so clever. Yeah. Are you clever? Yes, you are. Yay! In eight, Olivia Towers with Mercy and Caliso. <laughs> okay, this is Wilfy chilled out. This is probably the most chilled out you'll see him for the next three days. Oh, he says it's another playground. So this show was actually the first time I ran Wilf through the Inter 1. Um, nice time to pick, isn't it, a Premier League? Uh, we can blame Sasqueen for that. But anyway, as you can see, he is quite um, tight still in his changes. What I found, though, is uh, just to not make too much of a big deal about it and just to keep going with them um, to give him more confidence so that he doesn't get nervous when he makes a mistake. So you can see the threes have more confidence, but when we come into the twos, which are now, you can see he goes higgledy piggledy again because these are new for him in a test. But I just wait for him to feel a bit calmer and then represent them so he knows it's okay. Whilst we were competing him at PSG level and into one level, um, we were starting to train him at the Grand Prix stuff. Now, in hindsight, looking back on my journey, I kind of wish that I had just not focused so much on competing him and probably done more on the training. It was quite tricky um, competing him at PSG and into one and then going home and, and training on the Grand Prix stuff and then going back out to a competition because what was happening is I would get almost fixated on the competition stuff and go well I need to get this better or he I, I need to be able to get him to relax in the arena and really what I've learned from our journey is that training him in the Grand Prix stuff getting him in a better way of going has helped him massively to relax in the test. But again, we all live and we learn and he has given me a lot of lessons. Um, but it's really cool just to reflect back on that and um, see. But yeah we, yeah, we just cracked on trying to train some of the Grand Prix stuff in. So yeah, that's what we're gonna look at now. God help whoever she ends up with. That was better. Oh, perfect. I just got my one. Woo! Mum's like only nine more to go. Typical. Yeah. <laughs> you can't do an into two with two ones, can you? Well, I'm chuffed anyway. Even if she's not. <laughs> I did them right for the first time and she's like, oh, it was a little bit together. Sorry. Oh, well, you're so capable of some great things, but... I'm doing this filming. See, you like a bat out of hell. Yeah. Oh, fuck, I... Good boy, Wilfie! Hot, hot, hot now. Are you hot? Oh, I'm disgusted. Uh, I know that I have to up my game a lot more, so I'm going to be working with mum a lot more at home. Oh dear, this could get messy. Um, because I need those eyes on the ground all the time to start to just push it even more now. So that is kind of what I've taken away from this show, that I need more criticism on a daily basis. Oh well, you've come to the right person for that. Yeah, and we all know mum's really great at that. Oh, good boy. Well, that's the best medium trot you've done in your life. Good girl. Sure, 
shoulders, a bit more shoulders off that angle. Good try. The video we're watching at the moment is of an advanced medium when we were qualifying him for the regionals at advanced medium. He was, as you'll see earlier in the video, competing at PSG and doing not too badly. And I think this is why this test was so disheartening for me because I really thought that we had overcome these insecurities. It was really tough for me when we had tests like this. Here you can see I retire out of the test. It definitely made me question myself as a rider, which had positive and negative effects because of course I was always reaching to improve myself, but then I would also um, be very tough on myself and wonder if I was doing a good enough job with him. So um, I'm gonna keep this short and sweet because I feel like, you know, you all know what Wilf's like. And to be honest, the journey continues. Um, I had to retire out of my first test. I think personally, I rode him a little bit too defensively. Um, watching the video back, I got a little bit rigid in my seat. I got a little bit rigid in my arms. And the thing is with Wilf, if you make the tiniest of mistakes, um, then it really does show up with him. So that's how that went. So as I've mentioned, between going to competitions, we were training um, the Grand Prix stuff here is a little bit of work in the PF. Um, and then when I was watching this footage back, I literally was like, please slow down, Olivia. Why are you going so fast? But this is just the journey of me trying to find more suspension in his trot. In hindsight, this is something that I would start to teach my horses a lot sooner on, not just when we're coming into Grand Prix, so I could take a longer period of time to teach it them. But we live and we learn. So Wilfred was amazing. He did the best Piaf he's ever done. Um, I'm so excited as well, because I didn't have to like keep tapping him in it. He stayed in it, it was a lot more active, which is wicked. Set. You, you are putting set to three, good. How many set to three can you do? So now we have coming up um, a couple of shows. Uh, again, it's just done in time order. I've just followed the vlogs through in time order. But a couple of shows where you can just see in my face when I'm explaining that the frustration that's there. There's the, I tried to be so positive and upbeat beforehand, but you can see um, the effect that the tricky tests had on me at the end. And this was a really tough period uh, because I was so hard on myself. Um, and it just, well, you know what it feels like if you've competed before when you come out and it hasn't gone well. 
it's really tough. But again, I want to show you reality and show what happened. Um, and I went and looked at my mark and it was 63 and I was last and I literally felt awful <sighs> like really bad it's it's hard to describe well I mean if you've put like your whole life into something and then it doesn't go quite to plan of course it's going to be really hard and I put I've put so much into it and that's fine like I know ups and downs are gonna come but it doesn't make it any easier at the time and I know that I'll be fine like I'm, I'm feeling better about it already I know that I'll be fine but like at the time it's so hard um, like I put so many expectations on myself as well like the things that go through my head it's like I feel like embarrassed I feel awful i feel like i've let people down i feel like i've let my mum down i feel like i've let everyone who um works with us down i feel like i let the horses down um it's hard and then it's harder as well vlogging it um will's training is where it is he might not have the most expressive trot at the moment but i know that will come when he learns to do the passage and stuff and just to stick to my guns because i just want him to be soft supple connected all that um and do that so how am i feeling i feel a bit more nervous now i've just started speaking about it but anyway um i'm gonna be fine i'm going to repeat my performance statement over and over again and be like i believe in myself i'm gonna perform each movement calmly with determination i'm not gonna worry about people watching me who's around me who's in the warm-up because I know that I sometimes think like, oh, they're looking at me like, what is she doing? And I think it's quite a common thing when you're competing. And a lot of people say it to me that you panic about what people are thinking around you. And at the end of the day, we're all trying our best. And it doesn't really matter what they think. And yeah, um, I'm rambling, aren't I? So I'm going to stop. So then next to enter the arena for the FEI Prison Shores Class sponsored by Fairfax Saddles, Olivia Towers and Mercia Kalisa. So here we have a, another PSG um, which was at Myers Co Premier League and I wanted to show you guys this just so you can see where he's at in his training in a test. Um, you saw his first PSG uh, and how insecure he was and what you'll see throughout this test is he's definitely more secure in it but there's still a lot of training um i don't want to say issues but things that are need to be improved within the training um again you can just see that he just needs more connection from his hind legs through to the bit and that is where you then will um, not get such a floppy horse if that makes sense so you see how he takes a little bit smaller strides um, and then mistakes like that happen, which I was absolutely gutted about. Um, but in hindsight, I can see why he's doing it because he's just not uh, connected enough from behind. Something that people are quite often shocked about as well with Wilf is he's, he's incredibly weak across his back. Although he is built quite big, he has always struggled um, with, he's always wanted to drop his back and disconnect. And that is something over the years that I have had to really learn how to um, get him to engage his core, lift his back up. Because the minute he drops his back, his hind legs disconnect and then he just loses everything. The changes aren't so through um, and I feel like I'm sat in a little bit of a bucket. So we've had to work really, really hard on that. Here is a prime example of him dropping his back. You see there how he can't keep the canter and do the pirouette is because he's not quite connected enough. This one's a little bit better. Um, but still, they've definitely improved over the years. And here are some changes, which, yes, still a little bit of tension, but you can see that he, is, well, it's definitely improved from advanced medium. So that is always a positive. So, literally just got off and still feeling so annoyed that I cantered in my medium trot and messed my fours up. In my changes, I was like, come on, you can do this. You've done them before. Like, you need these changes to get a good mark. And again, like, what am I doing? I'm focusing on product, not process. And I did catch myself in the walk pirouettes about to do it. And I went, no, Olivia, think about the process. What do you need to do to achieve these changes? And 
uh, sorry, to achieve this warp pirouette and I didn't do that in my changes. So that is why it went wrong. And it's not like a magical thing of like, oh, it was a mistake, it's a shame. It like, there's reasons it went wrong. And that was it because I went into it not thinking about what I was doing, putting a lot of pressure on it, having it to go right. And that's why it went wrong. So I know why it went wrong. I know I can do changes till the hills come home. Till the cows come home, is what I'm saying. But you live and you learn. And I do a lot of learning. So this is one of those tests which really I just remember so well because there, one, there was a lot of people watching and it was a gala evening and I was really excited to ride him in it. It was the music class and he was wild. So Wilf really helped me to deal with situations like this because he presented them to me quite often. Um, and what I learned over the years of doing this with him is there is no point in me um, getting worked up with, oh no, I'm not going to get good marks now and, you know, I have no chance of winning. I have to completely forget any of that and I just have to deal with what I have underneath me. And for me, the most important thing is to just keep working him through it and trying to um, just improve him and to get him to um, be a little bit more relaxed and less nervous in these situations. So I just had to ride the best I could with what I had. The really cool thing with this test is actually after I competed, and of course I was upset because, you know, it, you're going to be, um, is loads of people messaged me that have been watching in the audience and saying how um, well I dealt with it, how well I rode him, I didn't get angry at him, I didn't get frustrated, I just kept riding the horse I had. And for me, that was a real um, boost because that's always what I've tried to be as a rider, not necessarily like it's going to go right all the time, but that I deal with these dodgy situations in the best way possible. But you will see from the vlog in a bit that it is, of course, really disheartening and hard to digest. Huh? What happened there, Wilfred? So Wilf was mental in that. If you guys watched it, like you were here watching it, you will see the Billy Bolt at the beginning. I didn't get it on camera. He freaked out when he saw the crowd. I did pray coming around the corner. I was like, please, if you're with me, help me with these fours because there's no chance I was going to get them and he got his fours and his threes. So that was good. So at least I know the big man's watching. He's obviously character building me. <laughs> and I just really wanted to say it was a better day. And I'm kind of getting bored of saying it went wrong. Oh. I don't even know what to say. I've run out of words. I've run out of w how many different ways you can say it went wrong and I just need to get better. I don't really know what to say. Um, I wouldn't have minded if there had been mistakes. But it's one I don't feel like I ride him well. I get upset. So a couple of days after I have been miserable about the show, which is what you guys have just seen, and that is completely human and completely normal, and that's why I like showing it, um, I always would get determined after having shows like that. So once those emotions are passed, I was like, right, let's go, let's go and get it. Let's go and work harder and um, yeah, just keep trying to improve. And this was great, but why, what I found around this time in my journey is even when I really pushed forwards, I was still super hard on myself, um, as you will see in the footage after this. I think because I was so new to this level and it was literally like the blind leading the blind, neither of us knew what was going on. Um, it was hard and that is so normal on your journey with horses. And that's why it's really important to be kind to yourself um, whilst pushing forwards and learning new things because it makes the journey so much easier. As you will see, I learned this the hard way. <laughs> yes, I am sat in the toilet. No, I'm not peeing. Look. Um. I just feel really sad. Um, so I had to take two minutes before getting on the next horse because I really don't want it to affect Eagle. Um, but I'm just really finding this Grand Prix stuff hard. 
and I know it's the top level but I know the feeling I want and like the feeling of the facade and the ones and I know what I want I just can't quite get it and mum's saying it's because Wilf needs to get stronger I totally understand that but I just feel like I'm throwing myself all over the place I feel like i am not got any balance I feel like my position goes it's just difficult it's just difficult and now I'm beating myself up and I've got to snap out of it because it's not productive right we're fine So here's a little bit more footage of us training the passage. Things are starting to gear up now um, towards doing our first into two. In hindsight, I really wish I had started teaching him a little bit of the lift and the cadence in his trot a lot sooner on in his career. But I didn't really know how to and that is again, it's not my fault, I just didn't have that knowledge. But the reason I would now do that with other horses is so that I could take longer in that process, almost like play with it, have fun with it. Um, and it's not so high pressured for the horses because they have a longer period of time to gain that strength and confidence in it. Here we are practicing a little bit of forward piaf into just a small passage. As you can see, this is really hard for him to uh, learn to push out of it, but that is common for a lot of horses. I don't know how much footage mum got, but basically like Will's passage at the moment is, it's not very inspiring, it's not very like big or impressive or expressive, but we're just trying to teach him to do it like rhythmically and to yeah, just to get the idea of it, get it small and then once he's stronger start to get more expression because it's just a strength thing with him um, and then once he gets more used to it and a little bit stronger we can start to put the expression in but what's really cool, like he did a little bit of baby like piaf into a little bit of passage so that's good, so he's not far off doing an into two so welcome to Myers Co Premier League 2019. This is actually, oh, it's one of the best shows ever. This is where he won two tests. He got his first rug, first sash, which was just incredible. But the funny thing is actually warming up for this test, um, this is the first one he won, he just did not feel great. I was really struggling. I was really overthinking everything. And mum was like, oh no, she's going to go in and like have a meltdown. But I just got in there and I was like, again, I'm going to ride what I have. And we ended up having a mistake-free test, which I always knew if he could do a mistake-free test, he could win. Um, but as you can see from the footage before, that was always quite tricky with him. Um, so yeah, he won at this show and it was just such a boost after having um, a tricky journey with him. And it really, again just made me know that things were possible for both of us and we finally managed to nail those fours i'm in the lead everybody and we're like three quarters way through the class still in the lead starting to hyperventilate because there's not many people left to go but kate's mark still gotta go up all in the memories and captured in the highlights just keep on Um, but this is such a big day, it is the first time I will ever ride an into one and it's the first time Wilf will ever ride an into one so we're doing it together, we're experiencing it together and I was thinking the other day, this is such like, oh this has been such a long wait because I rode my first PSG into one when I was 17 so nine years since I moved up a level in dressage, which you could think like, wow, that's a long time. But what it was is because um, I had to start from the bottom of the fact that I had to um, buy a young horse and produce him up the levels. And that does take time. 
and because as well I was learning it um, it took a bit longer and then because I had the negative mindset it took a little bit longer now I'm up against Carl my first into two I'm against Carl and all of his pupils so welcome to our first into two which like I've just mentioned was literally like the Olympics but that's okay that's what happens in Gloucestershire uh, where I live so anyway here is sausage in the warm-up um, this venue is actually this is like the baptism of fire for Wilf he absolutely hates it here because this is not something that many people know but now it's in the vlog and you will uh, he actually broke mum's leg here whilst we were in the lorry tacking up for a show. Um, she was trying to put a boot on him. He panicked, kicked her in the knee and bent her knee in backwards. So it's always been a little bit of a, a dodgy place for him and he's never really settled. So I wasn't best pleased that we had to do our first into two here, but it is what it is. Um, and the test itself went well. Uh, the passage and PF, as you will see in a sec, is really, really weak. But it's easy to say that, isn't it? When you've you started to understand it more, develop it more, you can sit there and say, oh, it's not very good. But it's just where we started. And again, I was a little bit nervous, um, so I was a little bit tighter. But his PF was good and the passage just needed some strength. Again, this is just showing what I was talking about earlier, where it would have been really good to start to teach him this lift much sooner so that he could have developed it and been stronger within the test. This is what you see quite a lot of professional riders do. Um, but it's all good. We got there in the end. Uh, the canter work in this test was a little bit dodgy. I think I explain afterwards that I know I should be pleased, but I wasn't. Um, and that's again just showing how tough I am on myself my first into two that I wasn't I wasn't best pleased. But again, I made mistakes in things that were, you know, we, I knew we were capable of. There you see he just tries to shoot off. That's a classic of what he used to always do in his changes and you can see the progression we've made where I can settle him and then be able to do some ones so that's a real positive um from this test but yeah you'll you'll see now that I'm not best pleased I know what you're all thinking I should be really happy be happy I should be happy I'm really proud of Will but I'm also being honest with you really annoyed that I messed up my medium canters like both of them it's an easy move I could have got two good marks for easy moves and it would have been better I messed up the easy parts but anyway I couldn't leave this vlog out because it was just one of those ones which <laughs> shows the reality of horses. I've just done my first into two, come to do, I think this is, yeah, the into one. Um, this was actually the day before I did the into two again at this show. And uh, he was just wild. Um, really, really struggling. Okay in the trot, but again, that is completely normal for him. He rarely blows up in the trot. Um, it's always the canter, but I, I can always tell within the trot when the canter is going to be hard because I don't have much of a half halt. I am a little bit sitting there going, oh no, I'm on a bit of a wing and a para here. And what I've really learned from, from Wilf now in our journey is how important it is to have him around my inside leg, have him on the outside rein and have him through and over his back. Because when he is truly there, he isn't naughty. And I think the hard thing with shows is you, you have to go in, don't you, at the end of the day, you have however long you decide to warm up and then you do go in. Whereas when you're training at home, you can just work that horse until they feel the best they can. And sometimes that takes 10 minutes, sometimes that takes like the, four, the whole 45 minute session. And that's why shows are difficult because well, you have to get it ready, don't you, for the test. And sometimes I didn't. And with Wilf, when I didn't have it, it wasn't like, oh, you know, it just doesn't look as good. It was that he was just really, really naughty. Um, but this again is why he's really made me up my game as a rider and I've had to improve for him.
I was trying to think about what to commentate over this, but I mean, well, this is meant to be a medium canter and you can just, <laughs> you can just see how he just holds himself against me, does not want to let me in. And that's difficult when you're trying to do advanced moves. And here again, we're coming into our changes, which I thought that we had started to get better at, but again, the tension just gets in there and his legs start flying all over the place. He tries to run off. Well. Right, then you do a pirouette like that. What a sod, isn't that? He's so naughty. <laughs> it's all so easy as well. I think she'll probably retire in this. I would think. At least now she can get him back every time. Mm. I think the hard part about it is, is I know if I rode better, it would it would it wouldn't happen as much. It's where he gets me like tip, he get pulls me out my seat a bit, and my legs come off, and my hands aren't good enough. And I'm not. This is not me being like really hard on myself while well, I am being hard on myself, but it's like the facts. It's the reality. <laughs> Next up, we have a monumental show, not because it went well, actually because it went horrendously. And this was the reason that I decided to try a different route with him to um, see if there was a different way. way. Because I've been, I've been working so hard on riding well, on sitting correctly, on sitting straight, um, loads of different things. And there was just something missing. There was some gap in my knowledge. Um, so at the show, I actually bumped into Claire Gallimore, who now trains me in the groundwork. And I remember saying to her, like, I just, there's got to be a different way. And um, I had seen that she put an advert out a couple of weeks before the nationals that she was starting to coach people in the groundwork. And I said, like, please, can you help me? Because I just don't know what to do anymore. Um, and I know that he's not happy. And obviously I'm not happy when he's naughty. And I, I want to, I want him to feel comfortable in the arena and not feel stressed. And she's like, yeah, of course, like, there's loads we can do. Let's, let's go for it. And so this show, as hard as it was, because I actually came last at the nationals, um, was a huge turning point in me realizing that I needed to find an altern uh, alternative route to um, dealing with him. And Claire helped me so much to understand where I had been going wrong with the the method of just keep going out competing, just keep going out competing, he'll get there in the end. She said, all you're doing is repeating a pattern, repeating a behavior, and it's getting more and more ingrained each time. You need to, uh, you need to find something that's gonna break that pattern basically and give him a different option. Like when he gets stressed, there is a different option for him to relax his body instead of getting tight and running off teach him that and then you're going to be on in a much better place so that's really what we we worked with with the groundwork and i can honestly say it's one of the biggest turning points in my 
um, horse career because it made me understand the animal so much more. It gave me so many more options. Oh, it was just the best feeling. So first let's go through the national test because it's, yeah, it's just, yeah, it was terrible. Um, and then I'll show you a little bit of me working with Claire in the groundwork. At the retired, let's go. Mercy and Caliso. The retired owned the 12 year old Dutch Wolfland here by Timeless. 12 years of age now, the more they've had the uh, horse for since it was five, so some seven years for the Heritage Butcher based. Uh, Danny, as he's known, was second in the Priest George at the Winter National Championships here. Well, not here, obviously, but the Winter Championships last year. Has won several Premier League small tour classes and won the Inter One Freestyle at the Harbury CDI this year. He also won the Inter One Regional. Oh, 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 sausage. Oh, oh. Nicky Barker and Europe. The battery's gonna go. <laughs> no, is that my camera? Yes. I'm, I'm actually shockingly quite happy. I think it's because I rode well. I mean, we can't do anything about sausage, can we? Someone's got to let the side he down. He felt powerful. Oh. So we just got the sheets. And because sausage got mostly ones in his canter, he ended up on 56%. Which I'm not sure if he came last, but I'm pretty sure he did. I haven't checked. He probably deserved. So, um, yeah, I'll probably talk to you guys <laughs> not in a car park, maybe tomorrow when I've been through everything, so stay tuned. Wasn't that disappointed, um, like obviously I was disappointed but I wasn't that upset and I think it just shows like the growth I've made um, as a person in the last three years because normally or like in the past that would have thrown me massively and I would have been so hard on myself mean on myself and just been so down um, so I think that's like a massive positive to take from it that I just had like peace after it and I think the reason I did feel peaceful after it is because I knew that I did my best with the horse I had that day so I gave a hundred percent for the situation and I'm really proud of how I handled it. I'm really proud of how I rode. And I know this might sound like it's not pessimistic. Um, it's just being realistic. Is Will might be like that for the rest of his life. He might just have the occasional show where he just loses the plot. Um, and that's okay and that's not my fault and it's not his fault. It's just how he is and that's his character. And I know that I am riding him the best, like to the best of my ability and I don't feel any more like oh someone else could manage it better I feel like 
I'm really proud of how I'm managing it. Exciting two days here because Claire Gallimore has come up to do some of the in-hand work um, or groundwork. And yeah, they're going really well. So I did Molly and Wilf yesterday. Um So to finish on our vlog journey, uh, we are gonna end on one of the best. Uh, this is the first Grand Prix I ever rode myself, the first Grand Prix I ever rode with Wilf. Such a big moment. Um, loads of little mistakes in there, but who cares? Because it was just a really, really epic, epic adventure. So here is the vlog that I have been waiting to make. Oh since I started vlogging, um, there have been times where I really didn't think it would happen. Oh, it says I'm exhausted, everybody. Do you know? Do you know what I just had to do? It was tiring. Sausage. <laughs> I think you may be able to ride now. best comment ever. It's a while but. <laughs> so there you have it guys, that is actually the end of the vlog journey. Um, there was another one of me doing another Grand Prix but I thought we'd finish on the like 
epic first one. Um, and I actually took a break from vlogging because I wanted to really focus on my riding and that's definitely paid off. And now I'm starting to bring it back in, but definitely keeping the horses um, in front of it because that is my main priority. But yeah, as you can see, it's been a right roller coaster of a ride. I wanted to finish this vlog with showing you guys some of the training stuff that he's been doing over lockdown because he has really turned a massive corner. You'll see how he's got so much more strength in his trot now. Uh, oh, it's just great. So um, yeah, that's how I'm gonna end the whole vlog. But I really hope you guys have enjoyed watching our journey. Um, I hope that it has inspired you and encouraged you in your own journey with your horse to know that um, it's definitely not smooth sailing. And also, even if you are making a lot of mistakes with your horse, it doesn't mean that you can't turn it around and change. I made countless mistakes with Wilf um, and he has been so forgiving and um, just an incredible partner to work with. So I'm so thankful to him. Um, yeah, let's watch a little bit of him training. <laughs> For the record, I'm done trying to make y'all comfortable. For the record, you ain't trying to grow any stuff for you. For the record, lab on me going all the way. For the record, ain't trying to link no time to wish. So y'all, snake eyes on dice for y'all, shoulders on ice for y'all. A6 all the hay, I woke in a bar today, got lost in the ball and A's. I'm flipping the bars, I'm flipping the flipping the flipping the on record, off record. I still count wins when they got it. On record, off record. I let them take advantage. I was wildin'. On record, off record deals. Tell them talk to Colin for the quote. On record, off record. I still want the act, not the ghost. Don't try and make y'all comfortable. Right. For the record, you ain't trying to grow any stuff for you. Right. For the record, lab on me going all the way. For the record, ain't trying to link no time to wish. Don't try to make y'all comfortable. Right. For the record, we ain't trying to grow them stuff for you. 